So if you're fishing a point with an oyster rock on it and the tide drops a foot, the current is not set up like it used to be. So you have to adjust your swing of, the, of where you're casting or your boat position to find the fish again. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, does everybody know what I mean when I say you fish the swing? The swing is where the current is running from right to left and you don't ever have to reel. You cast straight out, maybe a hair up current, and you sit there and you let your mirror lure sink whatever depth it is and you sit there and tap and it swings more and you tap a couple more times a trout is going to hit it when it's sitting still it is not going to hit it while it's moving a bluefish will hit it while it's moving a little whiting do y'all know what a whiting is it's a little butterfish or whatever you want to call them they're about yay big right now they'll hit it while it's moving but a trout is going to is lazy. It's going to hit it when it's sitting still. A lot of times, what will happen is you think you've had a hit, and what's really going on is that trout has come up and it slapped the mirror lure with its tail. It's tried to stun the bait so that the bait doesn't move and it can turn around slow and grab the bait. If you try and set the hook when you feel that, most of the time you're going to miss that fish with the mirror lure. If you've got the guts and the courage to sit there and not move it, most of the time that fish is gonna come back and wallow on that thing, and you're not gonna have a hook in it, you're gonna have multiple hooks in it. So resist the urge to set the hook when you're mirror lure fishing, especially if you're fishing the swing, because what they're trying to do is slow that bait down even more before they eat it. Now they do get aggressive, and when they get aggressive, the bite's a lot of fun because they're gonna hit it and hang on to it the first time. And usually they're going to have a mouthful of treble hooks, which is good and bad. You can kill a lot of small fish when they get aggressive <coughs> like that. So you might want to bend the barbs. Believe it or not, bending the barbs, you're not going to lose many fish. It's going to work out real good for you, and it's going to be easier to get it out most of the time. All right, the other thing that I want to stress is that trout are one of the most color-sensitive fish I've ever found. Today they made an emerald green back with gold sides. Tomorrow they may want a red back with silver sides. You never know that same group of fish you fished the day before may want a totally different color tomorrow, even though the conditions are almost identical. There's no difference in weather, there's no difference in um, barometric pressure or any of that they just suddenly decide they don't like that color today yeah I don't want that one I want a red one instead of a green one so you have to be ready to adjust I'm fortunate in my boat where I can carry 12 rods and usually they've got different colors different lures different weights and I can sit there with a group of people and work an area and I can have three or four different baits out at one time. If they don't like that, I can pick up a different rod and say, here, try this, try this, try this. And all of a sudden you're gonna key in on something. This year has been phenomenal for me. And my buddy and I, the Teach Mirror Lure School, we discovered that that has been the bait of choice for me all year long. This is a clear blue back, silver sides, and a chartreuse belly. That's what this is. There's some up here behind me somewhere. Last year, the Catch 2000 was what they wanted. And this is an MR20 and an 18 color and broken glass. And when you see this reflected glass, that's what's going on. Now I started playing with that last year because they were eating what we call the old Christmas tree grubs. Anybody familiar with that? Old man came out with it years and years ago in a curly tail. And that red head and the white body, it went away in a heartbeat. And that Christmas tree grub, which is blue and red and green and all different colors, that prismatic color started working. And ever since then, <coughs> When they came out with broken glass, that seemed to me what they wanted. And 
for three or four years. That was the ticket right there. All right, everybody knows what 17 is, right? And then they make a heavy dime, which is the same thing. It only sinks at the same rate as your 52M. Your 52M, your old standard 52M, is the fastest sinker out there. The next one is a TT model. By the way, TT stands for tiny trout. For what it's worth, it's the one with little spots on it. You ever caught a trout and ate another trout, had it in its belly? I pulled a pound and a half trout out of a trout's belly one time. Think how big that trout was. Um, but, you know, it, it's little subtle things that, that make mirror lure fishing what it is, and that's what's cool. How I came about mirror lure school is I used to sit there at Texas Tackle and watch guys walk up to the mirror lure counter and steer at it like a deer in the headlights. And I spent, used to spend a lot of time when I lived down there at Texas Tackle. Now this is my hangout up here. Um, but I've watched these guys and I go up and ask them, you know, could I help you? And I don't know where to start. Well, Captain Mike Hoffman, and Corona Days and I do a mirror lure school. And we try and teach you the basics in two days and a night of class in mirror lure school. And it's two days on the water, full days on the water, fishing, and one night at class. And we beat into you how to work mirror lures. I teach braid because that's what I like to fish now. When I discovered that braid was the way to go and I could catch trout on uh, braid, I went straight to it. I haven't turned my head back since then for everything. Mike is still old school. He will teach you how to use mono and soft tip rods. I'm an old lazy guy, man. The less work I have to do, the better I like it. I want a stiff tip rod. I want a rod with a great drag on it. I want 20 pound braid, and if I'm throwing 52s, I'm going to put 20 pound fluorocarbon about yay much of it on there. If I'm fishing 17s, I'm going to drop down 12 pound test to fluorocarbon. That's what I'm going to fish it on. But I got tired of taking six pound tests and popping 52s off with it every 15 or 20 casts. It got expensive over the years. But that's what I do. Mike's still old school in that. So you get a day with him fishing old school methods. You get a day with me fishing my methods up here. I can't hardly tell any difference other than Mike's having trouble breathing at the end of the day from working so hard and I'm still back there from and I feel more bites than he does. I'm convinced of it. No. Um, no questions so far? It's the biggest group I've had. It's so quiet, I can't yeah, understand. Yeah, I have a question. Are, are these primarily uh, sinking floors? They're I mean, all different types. They're all there. diving? There's suspended, there's floating, there's sinking. Okay. That's what all these are okay. back here. Okay. That's what makes people look at them like a deer in the headlights. Where do I start? Right. This is what school is all about. This is kind of what you're going to learn a little bit of tonight, but it's not intense. I got too much ground to cover. Um, and you're sinking. You've got your 52s. You got your TTs. You got your 17s. You got your heavies. I think these are the 18s, right? The heavies. And um, I don't use many heavies because I don't fish them in current. Mirror Lure just got rid of one of the best lures they ever had because you guys would never buy them. It's called a 32. They don't make this anymore. So I go around to all these shows and I buy every one I can get my hands on. Because one day I'm not going to be able to get them anymore. I probably catch 250, 300 trout on this lure every year. Maybe more. Not necessarily this color, but that size. It's the size that I'm looking for. That's the small finger mullet this time of year that's just starting to show up. The neat thing about this is you can run it off the top hook just like a 52. It sinks at the same rate as a 52. Or you can run it off the nose hook, which is what I do, and swim it like I do the Catch 2000. The Catch 2000 is great in four foot of water or less, five foot of water or less.
firing in the house. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. Um, a good dirty watercolor for around here that I really, really, really like. Because I fish a lot of five foot or less. I used to fish out of Beaufort, Moorhead City a lot. I've been lucky to fish with some of the best trout fishermen in this state and some of the best trout fishermen coming out of Texas. Um, Texas has some beautiful trout fishing. They like coming up here because we have some beautiful trout fishing too. But I used to fish South River a lot and the old fellows that I used to talk to in South River at lunchtime always would tell me, he said, Lee, look for that five foot or less. He said, up here, that was key. Down here, it's key too. That five foot or less is as long as they got that five foot to roll off into in the evenings where they can get deep, kind of get away from some shallow water prey and stuff, trout get real happy. They like a nice sunny spot, flat spot to get up on in the daytime. They like to roll off in that deeper water during, during the evenings and get right on that edge where it rolls off right there. This is a 19 color and a catch 2000. It's got the old mudman a green back. It's got a red or a yellow belly. And it's got the gold sides. And it's an absolutely deadly color for this stained tannic water that we have. This is my go-to bait ball in that stained water. Some years it goes right on through. Other years it kind of fades off as the water clears up. And this year it was this puppy. See, I fish a lot of Catch 2000s. Very few people fish them. You're losing a valuable resource in your trout fishing if you don't start playing with Catch 2000s, especially if you're in that five quarter or less. Um, Kings Creek, Turkey Creek, um, the flats off of Goose Bay, all those are great places for those lures that I'm just talking about. Um, there's oyster rocks and everything else out there. If I want something that'll go a little deeper, they, I used to use the L29 in the mirror lure. This is a lip bait. That's what the L stands for, is lip. Now they make an L30, which is a little bit smaller. This is another bait that I really, really, really like. And uh, whenever I can find them at the shows, I buy them. Because I know I won't see them forever and ever. But the neat thing about this bait is if you're fishing with you and maybe your buddy and you're fishing a lot of current, um, I use it down in Ballhead all the time, that current down there. I'll position the boat and sit there and throw that out behind the boat and loosen the drag to where you can just pull the line off of it straight off the reel. Now, when you do that, when the rod's in the rod holder and you go to pull that line, it's a lot tighter. So that's why I put the drag so loose is so that when they hit it, they can pull on it. Just throw it out as far back as you can, let out a little bit more line, stick it in the rod holder and forget about it. Go fish in the bank that you're on. You know, that you're fishing towards. That's how I fish it. I, I like to fish off the bank towards the bank. Mike likes to fish on the bank towards the channel. It's about six to one and a half dozen to That's how my grandfather got me started. And um, anyway, we go out there and fish, 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 and all of a sudden you hear, ee, 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 ee. Most of the time, the biggest trout of the day is either going to come off this bait or this bait out there minding its own business, sitting in the current doing this. Diving down, popping back up, diving down, popping back up. Now what happens when you anchor out in the middle is trout look for seams. You guys know where a seam is? A seam is where you've got a calm water transition and a fast water transition, just like you do in a trout stream. Anybody trout stream fishermen in here? You know what a seam is then, right? Okay. Trout work on one side of the seam or the other. Remember I said they're lazy. 
They're going to sit usually in the calm water. We're going to do this. Look back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Wait for bait to come by. And when they spot one come by, they come up and eat it and go back down again. But when you anchor your boat out in the current, your boat forms a sink. Remember what I said about trout moving? The trout will find that seam. They will go and they look for it. They feel it. They have lateral lines. That's what they do most of the time is they feel what's going on. And they feel that seam and they go, hmm, maybe there's bait out here. And they go out there. What have you got back here? You got that little L29 sitting there. He goes, hmm, there it is. And he comes up and eats it. And it's usually the big, lazy trout that come up and eat one that's fat and sassy and you know got on a lot of weight for the winter and it goes up there and eats it now it's not saying a dink won't get up there and eat it either that's usually what happens so it's a good trick especially if you're a lazy fisherman i'm a mirror lure junkie i'm a lazy fisherman and um you know they it just works it's another trick in the book it's another trick for when those guys say, wow, look at the size of that gator you just caught on Facebook. You know, how'd you catch him? And you just smile and say, just caught him with a lure. You know, kind of like, where'd you catch him? Corner of the mouth. In the water. In the water. Stay. Down. Train. Sorry. Any questions so far? Go ahead. Procure? Do you use Procure on the lures at all? And I'll tell you why. <coughs> I've tried it, and I've tried it, and I've tried it. And there's something about the Procure after it's been on there, fish don't like it, that I can tell. I mean, I get rejection after rejection on a mirror lure and I'll tie a fresh mirror lure on there and all of a sudden I'll start getting hit again. That speaks volumes to me. Now I love Procure. On a gold spoon, you can't keep me in Procure off of. And by the way, trout will hit gold spoons. Trout will love to hit uh, spinner baits just for what it's worth. It's another arsenal. Question is, um, on these specific lures, you tie directly on the leader? No, I tie with the loop knot. With a, you don't use a swivel or anything like that? Keep your swivels to yourself. Gotcha. All right. These That's guys nice. are very weight sensitive. Okay. Changing hooks, if you don't do it right, will make the action totally different. Okay. Now, there are some bulk hooks out there that I use for king mackerel fishing that are actually very similar to these. But I've got a gram scale. And you wonder why I got a gram scale so I can weigh hooks. That's why I got a gram scale. And um, I weigh my hooks. I weigh my little um, splits, rings and stuff. I wanna know how to match the weights of these as close as possible. The hooks I use, I actually have to drop down one size. In other words, if this is a, uh, a four, I'm going to drop down to a six. If it's a six, I'm going to drop down to an eight. It's very, very, very important uh, to keep the weight as close to it as it is. What's mattering to me? Don't worry about that dog. Thank you for that. You're a retrieval method. I'm a little confused. How do you do that? And if it's a current, I do everything I can not to reel. I try and let the current do the motion. So when I tap it, it looks wounded. And I'm not talking about tapping it. That's pulling it. I'm talking about pop, 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 that kind of thing. If you pull it, it's not natural. It doesn't look like a wounded bait fish. If you ever take a, a, a mullet or a minhaid, throw him on the side of the boat and pop him in the head one time good, watch him uh, hop overboard and see how he reacts. That's what you want to mimic. 
you want to mimic something that's really perfect. If you can mimic that, you can catch a lot of fish with it. And that's part of what Mirror Lure School is about, is learning how to properly mimic a bird in your bait fish. Is there a particular loop knot that you like above another? There is, and uh, there's not going to be time to show it to you tonight, I don't believe. Um, usually, I've been given an hour, and I'm guessing we've already run a little bit towards the Okay. What's the name of it? It's my grandfather's loop knot. <laughs> I'll have to show it to you. Yeah. Very good. And I'll Very show good. it to you and not kill you, but I'll show it to you. Okay. Somebody have a question over here? Do I see a hand up a second ago? Yes, Come up here so I can hear you. I'm sorry. The, uh, the lure that you're talking about that's good for Lake Turkey Creek and the darker stained water, is there a correlation with the color and the way it reflects? Or Absolutely. What makes it? it? It's just like. Um, can you repeat the question? I'm sorry? Can you repeat the question? Oh, yeah. He said um, he wants to know about color correlation and the color of the water. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That and in between the sun. All right, I'll answer the overcast and bright day. On a bright day, I want gold sides. How many people out here used to troll or do troll for a Spanish mackerel? How many people use a gold spoon on a bright day? How many use a silver spoon on a cloudy day? You're doing it right. That's not saying the other way won't work. It's just typically on a bright day, a gold-sided lure it's not going to reflect as hard as a silver sided lure. It's going to look more natural on a, on a cloudy day, on a bright day. On a cloudy day, I'd rather have a silver sided lure. A little uh, eat up from being chewed on, but it's got the orange belly, it's got the gold sides. That's it right there. That's the Carolina Beach Special. Honestly, I do better with this down at Carolina Beach. The old 19 color. This is an old school color. It has stood the test of time. This came along before this did. Wow, imagine that. This got popular. This lost its popularity. Why? It was a new color. People started buying it. It worked. They stuck with it. I come along and I look back and what my grandfather used to have, my next door neighbor Clark used to have, this was the color they used back then. I picked it up and started throwing it and fishing it again. And guess what? I started catching better than I did on 808. This is me. This is the old 19 color. It's an old school color. It's a mud meadow green back. What do we have around here? We have a lot of killing fish. We have a lot of mud meadows. This is what really makes the difference for me. Will they hit it every day? No, they won't hit any of this every day. But if you play around with it enough, you'll find something that you do hit. Um, here's another trick. A lot of times you can't find This is another great dirty water color. Don't ask me why. It's, it's, I learned it in the South River. I go to, um, I used to have to go to the nail salons and walk in the nail salons and buy different color uh, fingernail polish so I could do this with stuff. But, and I used to get some of the funniest looks for those little Korean ladies walking in there and browsing it through all the ladies' wild fingernail colors. And then thank goodness Walmart put in this huge selection. So now I just blend in with all the other crazies and go into Walmart and I go up there. I don't feel that bad about it anyway. Everybody does, nobody looks at you stupid in Walmart. But um, you can get a lot of stuff. This is an interesting little thing. This is called the Patriot. They made this in a standard blue color. And then all of a sudden, in 2000 is when they came out with Catch 2000. But then 9-11 hit. And Mirror Lure is a very patriotic company. They love the United States of America. Even though the, they moved their factories down to Costa Rica, they're an American company. They love it here. And they, 
do everything to support the troops and everything else. They wanted to do something in honor of 9-11. They came out with one called the Patriot. And this is it right here. This is a Catch 2000, it's called the Patriot. And this is actually one of the originals that I didn't think head on it, I bought it this way. I just don't let any clients fish it, I fish it. So what I did was I went to Walmart, that I found it in just the standard old blue, painted my own heads on them. And if you don't believe that I don't use them, here's another one, just a painted head on it, catch 2000. Um, but this works in that brown stained Cape Fear River water, um, Kings Creek, Turkey Creek, all that. It's a great color. If you can't find anything else in your box that they'll hit, try the blues. I mean, that's how we figured out what was going on this year. But they wanted that little bit of chartreuse with it this year. So this turned out to be real good. So you know what I did. I've got two or three of these with painted red heads on. Because sometimes the red heads make all the difference in the world. So you can change things up yourself a little bit. Um, I'm going to kind of hop off of that for a second. Because I know the questions get ready to come up. What rods do I use? What reels do I use? What lines do I use? I've tried just about every braid that's been made. I have gone back to the original Power Pro, and that's where I'm trying to stick now. I do the promos. I'm a battle guy, a pin guy. I love pin, my pin reels. They hold up for me. They're basically bulletproof. I can leave them in the back of the boat. They get washed off great. I can put them in the back of the truck, and when it rains and they get washed off, great. They just continue to work and work and work, and they hold up well for me. They put the Conquerors on sale last year. I bought one of those. It comes loaded with the Invisibraid. Invisibraid's okay, but it tends to get curled up a little bit. If you have problems with braid, usually it's because of your fault. You've either been whining against the drag as hard as you can, like all my clients do, or else you've been casting a little bit of wind, you got a loop over the spool, you rear back, you throw it again, all of a sudden you got this big long time. Just remember one thing. Always pull the line from the rod tip. Don't ever pull it off the reel. Pinch it down, take your thumb and just do like this. And when you do, it'll come untwisted. And anybody fly fish besides me in here? All right. Pull it just like you'd strip your fly reel. Real slow, real easy. Most of the time, if you just take the time to unstraighten it, it'll just come right off. Always make sure it goes in the water. Don't let it in the boat. If it's dry, it's horrible. Keep it wet, keep it in the water. And if it goes in the water, when you finally get it all off and got your line back, it'll come back on your reel and it'll be wet packed again. Because you know how braid is, you cast it once, when it's first of the morning, it's dry and it goes about two-thirds of the distance it should. Put your rod tip down, reel it up real quick, throw it out there again, it goes for a mile. It's the beauty of braid. It casts great wet. If you can keep it wet, it's even better. But most people want to fish up here. I don't. I fish with my rod tip to the water. Why do I do that? Because I can feel them breathe on that braid. You can feel them if they swim with your tail. You can feel that little bit of your sensitive to what goes on. The new rods, man, they're just great for that. You know, once you get a feel for it, and you're not using long mono leaders, you're using short mono leaders, 18 inches is about it to me. I'll fish them down to about eight inches. Now, as far as floor carving goes, I'm a fishing guide, I'm broke half the time, I'm cheap, I'm trying to get by on as little as I can, I am a lover of um, vanish fluorocarbon. Why vanish? It's 100% fluorocarbon. I'm gonna say it one more time. It's 100% fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon is fluorocarbon is fluorocarbon. If it gets dirty, take a baby wipe and wipe it off. 
if you're really that sensitive to it, and it gets dirty, trust me. You take a baby wipe and wipe down the floor carbon the next day, it'll be black. And they can see it. So just remember that. They can see that. But you get 200 yards for $13 or $14. You can't go wrong with that. It's real abrasion resistant. If you learn how to tie a good knot in it, knots hold up well. And I will say this, if you're fishing loop knots, there are two things you need to do. You need to retie your loop knot in the morning. If you fish it more than two days, tie your knot connection to the line the next morning. Do you understand what I'm saying when I say that? If you don't, think of it as a Kevlar vest because it's kind of like Kevlar in a lot of ways. If you tie straight to your lure, especially with a loop knot, it bangs the fibers of that braid. All of a sudden, pop goes the mirror lure. I've watched more guys tie straight to braid and break off more mirror lures you can shake a stiff cast, especially 52s and um, 2000s. If you tie a 20 pound piece of mono to all that, and I use a uni to uni knot. Do you guys know what that is? Easiest knot in the time in the world. You can tie it in the dark. You can't go too wrong with it. Pull it down snugly and then pull the two of them together. You don't have to wet the braid to tie it right. Just snug it down and don't cinch the knot till the two knots meet. Then cinch it down. Trim it tight. You're good to go. But that's what works for me. What works for you guys, use it. But I'm just trying to save you some money, save you some time. And the other thing about braid, you're gonna hate me when I say this. See, you're giving everything away. <laughs> I'm trying to. I don't own the store, how can I? The other thing about braid is once it gets frayed at the front end, tie it to a post in the yard and go for a walk. Walk around the tree, walk. I use um, PVC pipe in my yard because it's smooth, not going to cut anything. When I get to the end, I cut it off the reel and I walk back to where I started and where I've been fishing all this time. I tie it back on the reel and I sit there and I reel it back on the reel. If it's low on the spool, I add a little bit of mono to the end of it. I don't use fluorocarbon, I use regular mono. There's a reason for it, but y'all don't need to know that. Just use regular 20 pound mono. You need a uni knot, tie it back on there, fill it back up again. You're good to go. There's nothing wrong. Braid has no memory. Do you find that colors make a big difference with your braid in general? Is that no. a whole other subject? No. And the reason I say that is because I, I use um, 30 pound bright yellow fluorocarbon when I dock fish. And I throw it under there in a pile of drum and I watch them swim around it and eat my bait. Hang on. The reason I do that is so I know what three rods I've got set up for dock fishing and I don't have to look for them. All I have to do is see the color of it. And I can grab those three rods and pass it to clients and go back to fishing. It doesn't fish. matter. I mean for the fish. Whether it's yellow or green. Or I don't use yellow for trout fishing. But I told you what I use yellow for. So that's kind of why. Okay. You know, it, it it's a specific color for a specific job for me. On my trout rods, now, that's Invisibrate, I trout fish with it. It's white, I see it. I don't know why they call it Invisibrate, I see it in the water. But they call it Invisibrate. Sorry. Sorry, buddy. It's okay. It's okay. Here, smell it. No, don't eat it, smell it. I'm going to bite it, it bit me. Um, I use the old school green color um, fluorocarbon. Um, and the reason I use this is because it gives me less trouble than these new slick colors. Even the slick green, I just like it better. It works better for me. And I told you I'm telling you what works for me, not what works for you guys. But this is what I found with my clients, and it does not tend to um, knot up as bad, 
my clients don't seem to have as much trouble with it. And I can get it untied or untangled a little easier. I'm not sure why, but I just know that that's what works for me. And I sit there and I untangle it. You make a mess of it, I untangle it. I went to the bank one day to get something. He goes, Lee, we got a new credit card for you. I don't want it. Well, we're going to give it to you anyway. I just need to know what your occupation is. I looked at him and said, I'm a professional line untangler. <laughs> and he stopped typing. He's like, what? I thought you ran charter boats. I said, I do, but I spend my day untangling everybody's mess. <laughs> True story. Um, What line is that now? Um, power cord. Oh, uh, no. Um, this is Power Pro. That's four car. 12 pound test. And you can see how short a leader this is right here. That's about as short as I'll bring it down. No. This is about where. I typically start from right there, maybe a little bit longer, but not much. And the reason I don't put much more on there is because I don't like casting with it, not inside the first guy. Fell in the back. I'm sorry. Sit. Sit. Yeah, I got a question. Yes, sir. How do you uh, adjust your fishing with all the turd grass in the water this time of the year? Fishing beer boards, are you avoiding the grass? I avoid you the grass the like a plague. Um, that's the beauty of mirror lure fishing. Depending on your water depth, there's a mirror lure that will pretty much fit it, um, or a way to fish it that pretty much fits it. Um, your standard 17s, wherever it is, right here. One thing about a mirror lure, if it's got a treble hook on it, it's going to tangle another treble hook. Count on it. Um, that's nice because that works within two to three feet of the surface. It's a very slow sinker. The Catch 2000 is a great suspended bait. You know, it'll go down, I can pull it down to like four feet, but most of the time it's going to stay in that upper water column. And it also depends on how you work the rod. If you keep the rod tip right down to the water and you pull it down like this, it's going to dive down. Fisher, come here. Back here. Stay. Thank you. Sit. I'm sorry. Woke up a sleeping dog. My bad. Um, with the Catch 2000, if you pull it up a little bit, you're going to keep it in that two-foot zone most all the way. Is that Kind of answer your question. In general, you're trying to avoid that grass. So you move to a different like area. a plague. Not if the fish are there, I want. I'll figure a way to fish around it. You had a question, I believe. Yeah, so on your trout rod, are you using 12 pound braid? No. 12 pound fluorocarbon? I'm using 15 and 20 pound braid. To 12 pound fluorocarbon? Yeah. <coughs> and I'm new to all this. For those y'all didn't hear, I just adopted Fisher last Wednesday. He's a rescue a German Shepherd. His dad is deployed right now and they just discovered the guy's wife has a stage four cancer and they got three small kids and they didn't have any choice but to give him up. And when my buddy the colonel came to me and said something, all I could say was sure, I'll bring him on. So he's He's all new to all this that's going on right now, so please forgive me. Questions? Not to change the subject on the lures, but you mentioned that spinnerbaits are good for... See, I told you he's going to change the subject. I knew I that know. was coming. <laughs> nah, just, Not to change the you subject. You said that but the thing is, the spinnerbait, you move. Yep. I mean, you move it. Mm -hmm. And they'll, they'll hit a spinnerbait moving? When I move it, I'm doing this with it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm pumping Okay, gotcha. Now, how, 
how I really discovered that spinner baits work so well is um, I used to fish redfish tournaments like the guys fish the bass tournaments. I happened to win the um, championship in 011. My little $12,000 boat beat out all the $60,000, $80,000 bass go getters. You know, we walked away with the paycheck. So, got lucky. Um, never went past 12 miles in three different tournaments. Just a matter of doing your homework. But uh, I was out of Georgetown fishing with a buddy of mine, and uh, we were great fishing, catching some of the prettiest trout you've ever seen in your life. Red fishing, and they were all on spinner baits. And I went, another trick in my arsenal, another trick in my arsenal. And uh, that's how I discovered they really liked it. You know, I learned a lot by not fishing people. My grandfather started me off on 52s. And back when I started, we didn't have grubs. You know, they weren't even a gleam in my eye when we first started. Can you, uh, can you tell us the difference? I mean, again, changing the subject, but, but but when you look at like like a gulp shrimp and that technique of a rubber, um, a lot of people use gulp and all that. In your opinion, what are the like the quick pro use of this type of lure versus the gulps? I mean, a lot of people. I've only been fishing at like a year. Everybody's like gold, 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 rubber worm, you know, jig heads, that kind of thing. I'm sure, you know, a quick, like, what's the um, advantage in your opinion? Or you know, I told you I'm getting old, I'm getting tired. And, and grub's great. I mean, they work. There's no doubt in my right. mind they work. Right. There's something about that pop it off the bottom and let them fall. Pop it off the bottom and let them fall. Right. Where you're going, pop and let them fall. Pop and let them fall. Pop and let them fall. Pop, let them fall. Tap, 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 tap. Tap. You're working about 10 times harder yeah. than I am. Okay, that's the key. Yeah. And that's the key. Now, I'm not saying that they're going to hit mirror lures all the time. Some days Work they're left. just going to hit a grub, and that's all there is to it. But there are other days they're going to go, ah, look at that thing. We're too lazy to go get it. And this mirror lure comes in, maybe just moving this fast past it. go, ooh, easy target. Okay. I'll take and the other thing a grub is a subtle hit it's like tick and if you don't feel it and set the hook it's gone yeah, yeah, yeah. and you'll reel it back in and that tail will be around the hook or and he'll be back gone. laughing at him He's, hey guys did you see what I did to that guy's lure I just screwed it up good he's got to fix it now yeah. you know, they're all hanging out at the bar laughing about what they did all day and then they're going, well, where's Bill? We had not seen him tonight. Well, Bill's sitting in somebody's frying pan because he came up, made a mirror lure, and couldn't shake it. Thank you. Um, but yeah, it's just less work. I, I keep telling people it's an old man's sport. And the biggest thing with a mirror lure is when you think you're working it slow enough and you're not getting bit, down. That's the biggest fallacy people have with mirror lure fishing. Is they want to fish it like a, um, a jig head. You know, I'm like, no, slow down. I wrap more knuckles around people in the boat sometimes and you shake a stick at because it's the only way I can get them to slow down is to, to wound them. <laughs> you know, I don't stick a hook in them, but I'll pop them with a rod. Is it a similar technique like with reds with mirror lures too? No. I know we're talking about um, If I'm going to mirror lure fish for a red drum, which I don't like to do because there's too many treble hooks involved, and um, I use uh, a red back and a silver body. They hit that over everything else for me. A drum will. Got your number now, don't I, kid? prefer working a fallen tide or an incoming tide? I don't have that luxury. So what I have to do is I have to have incoming spots, falling tide yeah. spots. I have to have high tide spots and I have to have low tide spots. I gotta have the whole 
gamut of stuff. Thank you.